God be with you, Henry. The Lord be praised. What brings you to me? Father, can I ask you about something? Of course, Henry. I thought since we drove Toth out of the province, things would be better. I mean that the roads would be safer and so on, and, um... Well, that's not entirely the case. Ah, the naivety of youth. Driving him out of the province was only the start. He left a lot of cutthroats behind, and they'll be sticking to their trade. And what's more, as long as there's a war going on, problems like this will keep coming up. Well, what can we do about it? Not an awful lot, unfortunately. My garrison is a shamble these days. I lost most of my men in Skalitz, and what I'm left with after Privislavitz is hardly enough even to guard Pigstein. Let alone guarding the roads and patrolling the rest of the province. I simply don't have the men. Uh-huh. I understand. That is, I didn't have the men. As it happens, you've come at just the right time. Recently, I asked an old acquaintance for help. Sir Kuno of Rickwald and his mercenary band. The men who ride with him are a rough lot, mostly former convicts, but they're as capable as any squad of soldiers. Well, excuse me for being so bold, but there's plenty of mercenaries around. Surely you can find a more... respectable band? You have a point, lad, but I'd like to tell you I talked to Kuno because I trust him. But actually my reasons are of a more pragmatic nature. You see, Kuno owes me a favour, so he'll serve me free of charge. So, you want me to join them? Yes, but that's not all. I told Kuno I'd send him a guide, but really what I need is for someone to keep a close eye on him and his men. Someone reliable. And I'd say you fit the part. Go and report to him at his encampment. You'll ride with his band on patrols and make sure they don't get too... disorderly. Who is this Sir Kuno of Rickwald? He's the last baron of the House of Rickwald, which became impoverished. So he took to the mercenary trade, like many poor noblemen do, unless they become robbers, which often isn't all that different. He's certainly an entertaining companion, but as a mercenary? Well, let's just say he has his own particular approach to certain matters. That well, sounds a little worrying. Oh, it's nothing too bad. Just that now and again he needs reminding not to step over the line. How is he indebted to you? I did him quite a big service, actually. I saved him from the hangman. Oh, that sounds like quite a story. How did it happen? You should ask him. You'll be spending quite a while riding together, so it'll help pass the time. But one thing I can tell you, he seems to have taken inspiration from me. A lot of his men had their own encounters with the executioner, too. All right. I'll go and report to him. Excellent. He set up camp between Ratai and Ladechko. It's a good base for covering the province. Good luck, Henry. And watch out for yourself. I will, sir. Thanks. Good luck, man.
I'll be with you. Uh, I'm looking for a Sukuno. Sukuno? Uh, Baron Rickvold. Isn't this his camp? You won't get nothing out of him. You must be Radzig's man. I heard he was supposed to send someone. Yes, Sir Radzig sent me as a guide. I'm Henry. I'm Jakey. And this here fella, we call the Stone. I can see why. What's up with him? Cat got his tongue? No, more like the dog got it. The executioner's dog. <laughs> when the executioner ripped it out of him. Anyway, you better come along with me. I'll introduce you to the other fellas and the chief. These here are the Bearman brothers, Petter and Jan. They're a barrel of laughs, except when they're too drunk to string two words together. Like now. <clears throat> Don't get on the wrong side of them, though, when their blood is up. Well, it ain't a pretty sight. Pleased to make your acquaintance, I'm sure. Never mind the fancy poses, Stefan. You're trying to kill the fucker, not teach him how to dance. And you, Dangler, stand your ground. Don't let him lead you round by the nose. Sir? Well, sir, this is Henry. From Co... From Lord Cobola. Ah, oh, it's about time Rads had got round to this. We need someone who knows their way round these parts. Leave off with the uh, bowing and curtsying. We don't hold with that tomfoolery here. Jakey! Where the hell are you sneaking off to? Go to the farm and get water. The lads are thirsty. But I went last time. And you'll go next time, you ungrateful pup. Get your ass moving. Snot nose brat. You pull them out of a pile of shit, and they thank you with back talk. Where were we? Oh, yeah. We need a guide who knows these parts. So I hope I can rely on you, Herman. That's Henry. Right. Well, as I said to Radzig, I don't want to carry any dead weight. We could find ourselves in some very tight situations where every sword counts. Well, I know how to handle a sword, all right? I've heard a lot of fellas say that. They still ended up on the wrong end of one. <laughs> we'll find out. Stefan, take a break. Dangler. Let's find out what Harold here can do. Sure. No problem, Chief. I'm 
combat. You didn't fare badly at all, I must say. You can ride with us. All right. Good. Thanks. Don't thank me yet. You don't know what you're letting yourself in for. <laughs> Can you tell me something about yourself? Drop the... Sir. That title brought me nothing but grief. But what do you want to know? I'd like to ask about your men. Ask away. What about the fellow they call Dangler? I've never ridden with a better man, I can tell you. He doesn't say a lot, but for that he listens all the better. Nothing escapes him. So he scouts for you? Not just that. It's happened more than once. I was closing a deal with someone, and Dangler told me after that he didn't like the smell of the fellow. Nearly every time he was right, and the fellow tried to stab me in the back afterwards. What about that dumb one? How did he end up with you? The stone? Oh, he just kind of tagged along. Just like that? Aye, just like that. We were riding from Olomots to a castle past Kladsko, when we ran into him and some other wayfarers camping along the way. You know how it goes. We made acquaintance with them, had a drink or two. Then we travelled on together. After all, there's safety in numbers. I'm not sure I'd be thinking that if I ran into you lot on the road. We might have done some things I ain't proud of. But wayfarers are sacred even for me. Anyway, our fellow travellers dropped off along the way. One in Mohelnitz, one in Schoenberg, and the rest in Kladsko. Except for the stone. He stuck with us the whole way. The fellas kept asking him what he was after. But of course, he never said a word. When we were approaching Barsdorf, I ordered the men to get rid of him. I had some business at the castle, and I didn't want any strangers sticking their noses in. Stefan tried to tell him nicely. We just sat there, staring like he was turned to stone. That's when we gave him the name. Then the Bearman brothers tried to get him off his horse. He booted Jan in the face and knocked him out cold. Then he jumped down and fell Petter with one punch. Oh, a man who can do that is a man you want on your side. So we kept him. Weren't you worried about having a stranger in your band? Especially one who didn't talk. No, I figured if he can't talk, he can't tell. Besides, I've had worse. Those Behrman brothers are quite a pair. Indeed they are. There's no more mercy in them than in... Well, a bear. If I told them to skewer you on the spot, they'd do it without batting an eyelid. Jesus. Oh, aye. They'd argue first about which one of them got to do the job. But they're as obedient as a huntsman's dogs. Real soldiers, the pair of them. Reliable, as long as they don't get too drunk. Then there's no keeping them under control. But, nobody's perfect. What can you tell me about Stefan? Fletching? For one thing, he's a very resourceful fellow. How did he come to join your band? Well, let's just say he was in the right place at the right time. You'll find he has quite a knack for that. So what exactly happened? Sorry, I'd love to tell you the whole story, but I'd be betraying his trust. Oh, now you've got me curious. 
Maybe I should ask him myself. Sure, why not? Our Fletch does love to converse. What about Jakey? Jakey? That boy will be the death of me. You've got to be tough on him, or he's good for nothing. But I'm fond of him, in a way. Like her son? I wouldn't go that far. But I've no family of my own. And unlike those other cutthroats, he seems to me like... like a good lad. Well, you're pretty hard on him, though. And the others keep him on his toes, too. The boy needs a firm hand. I was like him once, and I got the same too. If we let him be, we'd end up with a third bear man. And who'd want that? <laughs> True. Two is more than enough. What about your debt to Sir Radzik? How did that come about? A twist of fate, lad. I was fighting in the hostilities between the house of Schallenberg and the town of Colleen. Some trade dispute it was. And I fought under the Schallenberg colours. In the end, the two sides negotiated a truce. And I rode to Colleen with a delegation that was to parlay there. We stopped off at an inn on the way. And it was there that I met Radzig Kobila. I could tell at first sight he was a man after my own heart. A likeable rogue with a sharp mind and a merry soul. We spent the whole night drinking together and talking. And in the morning, we set off together with sore heads, but in good temper since he was travelling to Colleen, same as I was. Only, once we reached the city gates, they arrested me on the spot. <laughs> Seems the burghers had it in for me, since I'd been making their lives hell for a good six months. On the other hand, I was a member of the peace delegation, so by rights, they shouldn't have even looked at me sideways. And then it hit me why Radzig was there. Colleen is a royal city, so he was there to represent the king's interests. I see. So he was on the other side. That's right. Anyway, they threw me in a dungeon, and a few days later, word reached me that the Schallenbergs had reached an agreement with the Burgers. Only part of the deal was they would give them my head, and I'd surely have ended my day swinging from the town battlements if it hadn't been for Radzig. He liked me, and he could see it was a dirty trick, so he somehow squared things with the city council. Lucky for you. Indeed. I owe my life to Radzik, and I'll never forget it. He's asked me twice before for help. This is the third time, and how could I refuse him? Sir Radzik told me the Rickvold family um, lost its wealth. How did that happen? There's all sorts of ways to become impoverished. Nothing easier, especially when your father's a fool, and your mother's mad as a bat. Oh. But it's a long and twisted story. We took our name from Rickval Castle, but that actually belonged to the convent of the poor Clares in Tynitz. And my father only leased it. You see, he knew the abbess there since they were young. Knew her very well. There was even talk that she only joined the order because her family wouldn't let her marry him. Anyway, whether he was fucking her right there in the convent, or he just took a lot of interest in scripture. He spent an awful lot of time in Tynitz. Oh, he might have been after a bit of both. Sinning and confessing all in one place. Well, I can see the convenience of it. Anyway, my mother never had strong nerves. Truth be told, her sanity was always shaky. Pa's escapades drove her cuckoo entirely. Then, one frosty December morning, I was woken by screaming and smoke. I looked out the window, and I saw my mother there, in the courtyard, wreathed in flames. Behind her, the stables, the farm buildings, and the tower were burning too. And she just stood there, shrieking with laughter. Christ, that sounds like a scene straight out of hell. Hellish it was, I can tell you. Me and my sister Adela... And a few servants managed to get out before the whole place went up. I couldn't get to my father. Or my little brother. Poor lad was only seven. My sister and I were left destitute after the fire. But then my cousin, Adam of Drevich, took us into his castle. A few weeks later, he offered to buy what was left of our estates and sell me a small fortress near a Kovnik. 
It was a great relief. We suddenly had some hope of a future again. So I told my sister about it. And it was the biggest mistake of my life. A week later, the two of them announced to me they were getting married. And all that was left of our estate, lands, woods, villages, Adela was to get it all as a dowry. But surely that was for you to decide. You were the head of the family, right? Aye. Only I barely had 17 years under my belt, and I'd just lost everything. Of course, I argued with them. And that was the only excuse they needed to kick me out of Drevich too. <sighs> That's pretty harsh. You're telling me. But I'm not complaining. As my pa always used to say, if you could turn your hand to something, you'd never be lost. I doubt it ever crossed his mind how often I'd remember those words. Sir Radzig told me the Rickvold fa- Is all Christ. Was oh, but sh I You're telling me- Should we ride out? Aye. We ought to set out on patrol about now. Hope you've got your kit ready and whatnot. I'd like to head to the north. Is there anything interesting that way? North of here? Uh... Samapesh and Merhoyed are that way, and Talmberg is a bit further on. There's stables in Merhoyed. I wouldn't mind paying a visit to those stables. We can go through there. And from there? From there, we'll follow our noses. Something interesting is sure to turn up. I feel it in my bones. Man up and let's go! Sure. Chief. What a fine day, eh, brother? Indeed, brother. You know what I like best about days like this, Jan? Hmm. The scent of chamomile wafting from the hillsides. Among other things. Ah, like the rounded hills, rising, curtain, all soft and pink in the sunlight. And the fertile valley below, spreading wide and inviting. Dew glistening in a mossy hollow. The sweet aroma of honey in the air. The sturdy poplar, standing tall and erect. Aye, it reminds me of that day. That day, where the two of us fucked Fletch's ma. <laughs> Very droll. You'd make a stuffed bird laugh. Your ma's a stuffed bird. <laughs> I stuffed them myself. <laughs> I can't smell any chamomile. Well, men, how are things? May I? Yes, Fletch. How shall I put it? I'm a little concerned about the prospects in these parts, Chief. Oh? How's that? I've been looking around, and if you'll pardon me, it seems to me that we've been stuck for a long time in the arsehole of beyond. It's not Paris, France, I grant you. What I mean to say is, I haven't got any new kit, Arrows since the day Jakey joined us. It makes me uneasy, Chief. I see. What about the rest of you? I don't know what Fletch is moaning about. There's plenty of booze and loose wenches nearby. Not to mention fools in the taverns who don't know when to stop rolling those dice. Dangler? It's the arsehole of beyond everywhere we go. And it always makes me uneasy. Jakey? Fletch can complain. I was supposed to get a suit of armor, and all I got was a shitty kettle hat. Sorry, but they don't do hoberks in girl sizes. Oh? Well, how did you get yours, then? All right. I appreciate your honesty, lads. Don't worry. There will be plunder. We're here to fight. To the victor the spoils. That's how it's always been. But 
No purse of silver will shed blood for you on the battlefield. That's what this company is for. And I hope you never forget the golden rule. You can joke all you want, moan all you want, but nothing will keep your skins in one piece better than trusting your leader, who you choose by your own free will. So don't ever forget that. Amen. Let's go! Behind me, and keep your eyes peeled! What do you think we can expect this time, fellas? Groshen. Hidden in a piss pot under the bed. A nice chunk of beef. No one there will be eating. On account of it, it'd just fall out through the holes in their bellies, eh, brother? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. My mouth is already watering, brother. And I ain't even touched a purse yet. Once you've got your hands on some loot, I'll be happy to play you yeah. for your hard-earned crush in the back of the car. Poor old Fletch. Never gets to see the action from close up. What about you, Dangler? Expect to find utility in human suffering, like always. Always full of good cheer, eh, Dangler? Why don't you take a leaf out of Stone's book? Shut the fuck up. Jesus, I wish you'd all shut the fuck up. Keep your eyes peeled, though. There might be someone hiding out here still. Look for clues and question the survivors, if there are any. No signs of resistance. They simply slaughtered them like animals. <sighs> Looks like it happened fast. God almighty. They weren't even armed. What a pile of shit. I wonder if they found anything valuable at all. Jesus Christ, what a massacre. They turned the place over good and proper. Not much of a harvest so far. Hmm. Still smouldering. Whoever torched it can't have got very far. You found anything interesting? Fuck all. They cleaned them out good and proper. But one fellow was still alive. And what did you do with him? Don't you worry. I seen plenty of wounded fellas, and he wouldn't have made it. So, I put him out of his misery. I see. And did he tell you anything? Uh, he mumbled something about some Lord something. Zool, I think. Zool? I never heard the name. Me neither. But I don't know too many nobles.
Kuno, your men are robbing the dead. What did you expect, Henry? Old habits die hard, and most of the lads ain't had an easy life. Well, try explaining that to Sir Radzig. You're acting in his name here, so he expects you to behave the same as his own people, with honor. I see. What are you? A guide? Or a snitch? A guide, of course. You want to guide us to the path of righteousness? You know what? Go and tell your tells to Radzig if you like. I'm risking my life here for nothing. I can just ride off and leave you to it. I believe you owe Sir Radzig a favor. Hi. And this is the third time I've had to deal with his shit without a groschen to show for it. Because I owe him a favor. A word of advice, Henry. Better to owe someone a wagon load of silver than a favor. Can't be all that clever, or they'd have taken the wagon. Would you stop doing that? You think I'll have any use for this stuff? That's not the point. Robbing the dead isn't right. That's what you say. I say it's all the fucking same to them. They're dead. And Prague Groschen are worthless in Lombardy. Never mind in the hereafter. I'm telling you for the last time, stop it. And I'm telling you for the last time, I see no reason why I should. You call yourself a Christian, and you're robbing the dead. They've no use for anything, and I have to eat. I've seen your camp. It doesn't look to me like you want for anything. Not now, but a man's got to have something to secure his future. And what did you take from that corpse? Um, uh, a wooden spoon and some string. Oh, great. You can retire right away. I hope it's worth your immortal soul to you. You're a bit holier than thou, ain't you? But all right, they ain't got nothing worth a damn anyway.
Did you find any tracks? Some, a horse or two. They rode off through the meadow towards dawn. They were avoiding the road, which is interesting. Towards dawn? Meaning towards the east. Apart from the mounted ones, there were some men on foot too. Well weighed down. Well, they can't move too fast then. No. And what's more, they left a trail of blood. One or more of them might be wounded. Either that, or they dragged off some poor bastard from here. Nice work. Thanks.
Poor creature, hunted down like game. Looks like they carried away a lot of stuff. Seems they met some resistance at the farm. <laughs> what a waste. But at least I know which way they went. Up willing Gone weak the knees. Your end is nigh. That's all you got. You fall off on
Catch him up! Come on! I'm going to it! Don't make it worse, man! I'll send you straight to hell. Quitting? Yeah. Yeah.
I tracked down those raiders. You did? Well, nice work. So where are they? Well, they were a short way off to the east, in the woods, dividing up their loot. Were? They're gone now? Which way? Uh, down. To hell, where I sent them. What? Jesus, Henry. Are you out of your mind? Well, I took advantage at the moment of surprise. Christ above, I've met some mad bastards in my time, but... All right. I'll send someone there to scout around. Meanwhile, you have a snoop around here and see if you can find anything interesting. How did it go at the farm? Did you discover anything? Aye. We found a shield hanging in the farmhouse there. A tricolour, twelve-pointed star on a blue field. The coat of arms of the Zools. What does it mean? I don't know, but there was a message attached to it. I think Radzig should see it. Aye, he certainly should. And these Zools, who are they? An impoverished noble family. They fought a lot in Moravia. Who knows what they're after here? I'll have to get something to eat. I'm starting to get hungry. The Lord be praised. What brings you to me? Sir, I'm afraid I have some bad news. We came across a burnt-out farm near Merhoyed. Hmm. Toth must have left some of his cronies behind. Now this is something else, sir. We found a shield there with a crest. A tricolour star on a blue field. I know that coat of arms, unfortunately. It's the house of Zul. There was a letter there, too. Show it to me, although I think I already know what it will say. Here you are, sir. Unscrupulous beast, mm -hmm. cruelty and malevolence. Uh -huh. I challenge you to face me in a duel, defend your honour. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Aninomious wretch, well, that's nice. Mm. Signed, Hagen Zul. As I expected, old grievances coming back to haunt me.
What happened between you and Sir Hagen? That's a long story. Well, I'd like to hear the whole story, sir, if you wouldn't mind. Very well. It began in the first year of King Wenceslas's reign. He sent me to resolve a dispute between the Zuls and a neighbouring house. It concerned land boundaries. The Zuls had refused to accept the ruling of the land court. His Majesty's position was a little shaky after his coronation. So a decision was made in the royal court to take radical action against any dissent in the kingdom. Since the Zul family was defying the king, we were obliged to punish them. Harshly, as the circumstances demanded, the head of the family, Hagen's father, was hanged, their castle razed to the ground and their property confiscated. So, they're out for vengeance. But you acted according to the law. Would it were that simple, lad? I was young and didn't realise the repercussions it would bring. For one thing, the king didn't use it to strengthen his position. On the contrary, he took less and less interest in such affairs. How come? Because he realised things would eventually sort themselves out. He promoted me to royal hetman, leaving him to pursue other interests. Secondly, my actions essentially created another band of robbers. When you strip a nobleman of his property, you can't expect him to take to begging. And thirdly, I wasn't aware at the time that the other party to the dispute was distantly related to me. Naturally, that made it look like I was acting in self-interest. If I'd known what I know today, I'd have been a lot more circumspect. Mr. Hagen wants to challenge you to a duel. Apparently, he still hopes I will agree to this kind of outmoded solution to disputes. But surely you can't refuse a challenge to a duel. What about your honour? Henry, my boy, honour is a splendid thing, and it should be held in high regard. But in time, you'll learn that some matters are not so straightforward. Like this one? Yes, like this one. The only reason Hagen is challenging me now is that he has a marked advantage. I've served as the royal hetman for the last 15 years and become a courtier. Hagen, meanwhile, was fighting in the Margraviate Wars in Moravia and elsewhere as a mercenary. Which of us do you think would win a duel? That's not an honour, but an abuse of honour. Commonplace opportunism. I don't blame him for trying, <laughs> but I'm not such a fool as to play by his rules. Well, what are we going to do about this? You and Kuno's band will just have to deal with Hagen and prevent further mayhem. The longer he's marauding around these parts, the greater the chances that I'll finally have to succumb to his conditions. So you'd fight him if it came to that? Let's hope it doesn't come to that. But maybe there's something else behind this challenge. Maybe it's coin he's after. Who knows? All right. We'll deal with him, sir. I'm sure you will, Henry. I'd like to ask something about this Sir Hagen. Sure. See you later. Yeah.
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Henry, I'm glad you came. Yeah. Henry's come to see us. How dare you sleep in someone else's bed? Get lost! Thank you, Henry. I'd been to see Sir Radzik. So how did he take the news? Well, he wasn't exactly happy about it. I can well imagine. I wouldn't want the Zools plundering my estates either. If I had any. He wants us to carry on patrolling the area. There's nothing else for it. That makes sense. I don't think he'll come to us. So we'll just have to hope we run into him. I'd like to check out the big forest to the north. And then carry on via Ujits. Sure.
Mount up then, and let's go. Please, can we stop for a bit? My arse is aching, and I've such a thirst I could drink a moat dry. Same here. Now, what do you say, Chief? Not to worry. We'll re-choose it soon. We'll spend the night there. I heard they've got a peculiar priest there. <laughs> they say he drinks like the devil himself. <laughs> There's nothing strange about that. Every other man of the cloth is a swill pot. Or a lecher. Or both. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet. Listen. So, help me. Don't worry, lass. You've nothing to fear. We're with Sir Radzik, in a manner of speaking. What's the matter? These brigands came. The menfolk fled and left us there. They started pillaging the place, drinking whatever they could find and smashing things. I ran off, but the other girls... The... You've got to save them. Please, I beg you. Easy, lass. Drinking. You say? Aye, sir. They rolled the casks into the courtyard and started swilling like pigs from a trough. Well, as our old cook used to say, if you want to make a proper goulash, you should soak the meat in ale for a while to soften it first. Ah, let them get well soaked and then go and chop them up. Good thinking, Chief. But what about the girls? Those men, they... They were... Ah, I'm sure your friends won't be getting nothing they ain't had before. Well, unless they be nuns. <laughs> <laughs> Kuno, you know, the girl's right. If we delay, her friends will pay the price for it. I appreciate your advice, Henry. But it's caution that will keep you alive, not chivalrous deeds. You promised Sir Radzig you protect his fiefdom, and that means his subjects too. Come on, it's not like their lives are in any real danger. Hagen's men just want a bit of fun. A bit of fun? Are you fucking serious? You know very well, Kuno, how innocent girls can end up after a bit of fun with animals like that. Well, I for one am not going to sit back and let it happen, even if I have to creep in there myself and try to rescue them. Oh, all right. It's not the smartest thing to do. But let's go and tackle those fuckers, if that's how you want it. Good. Thanks. Right. We better try and save those girls from Hagen's brutes. Let's go! Who wants their back covered? My right arm is stiff since last night. Cover that side for me. Don't want it to risk dangling.
Come on then. took to their heels as soon as they saw the pit of you. Can't say I blame them. The fucking ingratitude. Well, at least the booze didn't run away. <laughs> Hi, booze will never let you down. Start making insults about your kin. You want to have a scrap with me? Scrap? That's putting it in vulgar terms. I want to challenge you to an honorable bout of combat. <laughs> You've nothing better to do right now, anyway. All right. A little practice always helps. My very words. Come on, then. I'm over here. for a game? Always. I've got some nice little items to wager. What do you say? Well, that depends what you have. I've got a shield, a jupon, and a very fine embroidered hat. The shield's got the Rickvald crest, a nice piece, handles well, and tough enough to take quite a battery. Then I've got this combat jupon. Not only does it look good, but it'll help keep your skin in one piece. And then there's this noble hat. It's not a lot of use on the battlefield, but if you want to look elegant around town, it'll certainly make a big impression on folk. And the girls will be fighting at your feet. I like the sound of that shield. I'll play you for that. 
All right, but what will you wager? You'll have to make it worth my while. After all, fine things like these here don't just grow on trees. Henry, come here. You don't mind. This should be enough, right? That'll do me. Let's play. Actually, they'd be reading their own thoughts, right? See, because the other fella would be thinking. They left us some damn good booze here. And as my old man used to say, the fire of battle must be quenched. Of course, the only battle he was ever in was with Ma. But still, it fits. Anyway, I hope you'll drink with us. Sure. Why look a gift horse in the mouth? My words exactly. Me and the lads were just saying how we know nothing about you. Most of the folk around here have hardly been further than the village market. But you must have seen a thing or two. Have you seen Sassau Monastery? I've seen it from the outside. A fine building. But at the pace they're going, it'll never be finished. <laughs> you could be right. Anyway, I've seen it from the inside. Like you were in the courtyard? Like I was in the cloisters. <laughs> Good one. Only the monks are allowed in there. Exactly. 
Come on, Henry. I like a good story, but at least make it believable. Oh, I swear to God. I had to get in there to find a fella who was hiding out amongst the monks. I see, but they don't take... No offence. Every idiot that comes along. No. You have to be able to read and write and speak Latin and sing it, even. Yeah, or at least convince them you can. <laughs> you speak Latin? Sure. Basio sepo volam qui plagam dilego solam. I'm impressed. What does it mean? Ah, something about how you can't trust anyone. I don't know exactly. You don't have to understand Latin to know that. No, it comes in handy if you want to insult a priest, though. Well, well, we have a scholar in our midst. And what's it like in the cloisters? It's like time moves at a different pace there. You pretty much have to do the same thing day in, day out. Get up before dawn, pray in the chapel, eat with the brothers, then go and work in the gardens or the library. I don't think I could handle that much excitement. Yeah. <laughs> it takes some getting used to, all right. Tell us another. That I have. I suppose you heard about the raising of scallops. Aye, I heard. And Radzig told me you're from there. But that's probably not the kind of story to go with wine and good cheer. Once I met a very peculiar character in Sassau. He was selling amulets, relics, and all sorts of supposedly miraculous junk. Charles, You want to watch out for fellas like that? Indeed. But this charlatan took me on as an apprentice. The sorcerer's apprentice? You're having me on, right? No, no, it wasn't like that. He just wanted me to, um, acquire some things for him. Nothing too difficult, so I did it. What kind of things? Like a tooth from St. Procopius, for instance. What? Relics like that don't exactly grow on trees. Oh, of course. So instead, we settled for a tooth from some labourer called Procopius. So this fella was walking around with a mouthful of relics. <laughs> How did it end up? Well, in the end, the charlatan was driven out of town by an irate mob. I was lucky they didn't lynch me instead. Nobody likes a swindler, that's for sure. Tell us another. Have you heard of Sir Hans Capon? I heard his name mentioned in Colleen, in connection with some wench, as I recall. A young dandy, eh? Yeah, that's him. He's going to inherit Ratai once he comes of age. I run some errands for him now and again. Well, once we were at the baths together, and his lordship wanted to seduce one of the bathmaids. Naturally, that's what the baths are for, among other things. Yeah, but with Sir Hans, nothing is ever straightforward. First, I had to play strip dice. <laughs> That's good. Did you win? <laughs> I did, but I had to strip myself anyway to get into the tub. Only, no sooner had I done so, than his lordship demanded wine from the castle cellars, which is a long fucking way from there. I reckon you're a man who can't resist a challenge. <laughs> if I'd been sober. I went all the way there and back in my undergarments, and no sooner was I back, than he sent me to pick flowers for the girl from the castle gardens. <laughs> it's starting to sound like a fairy tale with three wishes. Well, actually, he probably did have a third wish, but he didn't get a chance to say it. How's that? Well, I got back only to find the girl's sweetheart, some guard called Arson Balls, well, that's what Sir Hans called him, trying to drown him in the bath. <laughs> drown a nobleman over a wench. That's Balls, all right. Well, Sir Hans was naked and drunk, so he didn't look very noble. <laughs> Anyway, I tackled this fella and saved Sir Hans from him. It could have all got out of hand, but it ended with only a few bruises. Sir Hans never got his way with the girl, though. All that trouble for nothing. <laughs> a nice story, but let's just drink.
Can we set out? Sure. We'll head towards Sassau today. Jakey heard at the tavern in Ledechko that someone there saw some unfamiliar horseman. You think they could be Hagen's? Maybe, maybe not. It's enough that they're not local. Could be the escort of some merchant caravan, of course. Jakey, go and scout ahead. Don't want us running into any surprises. See if there's a good spot for us to camp. Right, Chief. What's the matter with Jakey? No back talk. I gave him a swig of snaps at supper. Perhaps it made a man of him overnight. <laughs> <laughs> or that boar piss of yours took away his will to live. <laughs> To be devite potoki vina, nes menis nes 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 is viva, nes menis nes nes kas es labi, vitali pien nes te vai nam labi. Hey, jes ti a vitali plemen o hadi, pusi exovia a bona jes vai. Up. 
back the way we came! At them! You will last long. You win. To the woods! We'll lose them there! What now? I don't know. They could be lying in wait for us anywhere. Someone must have snitched on us. We should split up and get the fuck out of here. So every man for himself? Just so. But you think it was one of the band who betrayed us? Look around for yourself. 
Who's missing? Jakey. That's who. I sent him on ahead, and he knows which way we're going. A little fucking Judas. When I get my hands on him, he'll rue the day he was born. I'll try and track him down. He can't be too far away. No, it's too risky. He could have Hagen's people all around him. All we need to do is get out of here in one piece. Yeah. Yeah! Yeah. I see everyone made it back in one piece. 
Thank Christ. Someone up there must like us. Somehow we always manage to get out of these sticky situations. Well, yeah, someone up there, or someone down there. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, the main thing is we made it. So we'll go patrolling again? We will, but not you. What? Why not? I found out where Jakey is. I want you to grab him, beat everything he knows about Hagen out of him. Well, that sounds like a good plan. But why me? For one thing, you're reliable. And for another, you're not likely to wring his neck on sight. Which can't be said for the rest of us. And where is he hiding? He isn't a little shit. He's drinking away his 30 pieces of silver in some alehouse, bold as brass. Be in on the meadow or something like that. Be in in the glade? Yeah, that's the one. What are you going to be doing in the meanwhile? We'll go on patrol as normal. It could be a trick, you see, to lure us into a trap. But what if they're waiting to spring a trap on me? It could well be, Henry. So you should be very careful. But one thing's for sure. Jakey won't be there forever. And someone's got to go and check it out. I'll get going then. Go. And when you find him, deal with him however you see fit. Just make sure you find out what he knows first. Right, Chief. You could at least dress decently before showing your face in public. I'm looking for a young fella by the name of Jakey. What about him? I heard he was seen here. Maybe, but he ain't here now. And can you tell me where he might be? No, I can't. He's a guest. And if I went mouthing off to anyone who came by about who was here and what they were doing, it wouldn't do my reputation much good. Sakuno of Riffold is. Nothing escapes me, lad. He's that mercenary who's been patrolling these parts of late. Well, this Jakey betrayed his trust and lured him and his men into a trap, including me. I'm sure you realize Kuno is pretty keen to lay his hands on this Jakey, and anyone who stands in his way is asking for some serious trouble. Eh? I'd never do that. Not me. Well, then, where did Jakey get to? Well, I was gonna throw him out on his ear at first. He strolls in here like some lord, ordering people around. He's nothing but a snot-nosed brat. But then, he showed me the way of his person. Well, business is business. He stayed here a couple of days. 
Yesterday evening he was boozing here. And then went off to the woods with some wench. To the woods? That's a very broad term in these parts. Someone said they saw them heading south across the meadow. There's pine woods there and cliffs, and that's where they went. The girl's father was here with her, a merchant. As soon as he noticed she was gone, he went off to look for her. You might meet him. All right. Thanks. Good luck to you. Henry, I'm glad you're here, Henry. I thought I'd be stuck here till Judgment Day. What the fuck are you doing here? I picked up this wench at the inn, see? And we wanted to go somewhere quiet. Only the bitch whacked me on the head with a rock and fucked off with all my coin. Did she now? Then which way did she go? I haven't a clue, but I reckon as far away from her father as she can get. She won't be going back in a hurry. I've met some mad wenches in my time, but that one was a piece of work. She could have just asked me for coin, instead of trying to smash my skull right away, and then to leave me like this. Oh, now you know what it's like when someone fucks you. Shame she didn't hit you a bit harder, though. Listen, Henry. That thing with Hagen, I didn't want to, really. But they kept threatening me. And then, they offered me coin. Jesus, Henry, I've never seen a pile of coin like that in my life. Kuno wouldn't give me as much as half a groschen for a cheap wench. Yeah, yeah, my heart bleeds. Enough. Tell me where I can find Hagen. Hagen? Lord Zul? Yeah, I'll tell you, Henry. We're still mates, right? Mates, after you dropped me and the others in the ship. You know we could have all been killed at that ford. Jesus, I know, Henry. I'm sorry, truly. But look here. If I tell you where to find Zul, you'll let me go, right? Let you go? That rock must have really scrambled your brains. Henry, I, I'm really sorry. I swear. Those fellas scared the wits out of me. I can believe that. But why didn't you tell us about it? You didn't have to betray us. I don't know. I... I was confused. Please, let me go. First, tell me where Hagen is, and then we'll see. I won't say anything as long as I'm tied up. I know how that goes. I'll be left here for the crows. You don't want to talk? All right. But I can leave you to rot here if I want. Come on now, pal. Henry, come on, matey. Surely you're not going to leave me here. Come on now, pal. Henry, come on, matey. Surely you're not. 
not going to leave me here. I can't feel my hands anymore. Surely you're not going to leave me here. <whistles> Henry, be reasonable. Come on now. Well... Well then, are you going to talk? Like I said, untie me and I'll tell you everything. Why did you have to betray Kuno? You could have just taken the money and done nothing. Yeah, just like Kuno would do. You've only been with us a while. If you'd been riding with him as long as I have, you'd see through him. He passes himself off as an angel of mercy, but he's as much of a swine as any common footpath. You're an ungrateful brat, Jakey. There's lads of your age work in the fields and sweating in forges, and no one pampers them. But you get a chance others can only dream of, and what have you done with it? But they don't risk ending up gutted in some ditch, day in, day out. <laughs> Funny you should say that, since you just came pretty close to it. And for what? You go boozing for a few days, and then you get duped by the first wench you run into. I know what you mean, Jakey. Kuno's no less of a bastard than that Hagen. They're all birds of a feather. Yeah, right? But why ride with them, then? Because Kuno's on my side. I didn't pick him, and maybe Sir Radzig wouldn't have either if he had a choice. But one thing I know. If you don't tell me where Hagen is, more innocent people will suffer. Oh, uh, I suppose you're right. Hagen's planning to raid some village. Samapesh, I think. He's going to go there in person, along with what's left of his band. So, are you going to untie me now? I'll untie you, all right? And take you where you belong. What? What are you saying? Where? To jail. But you can't. We had an agreement. We didn't agree on anything. My conscience is clear. Baked goods fresh from the oven. Come get them. Thank you. 
Yeah. Henry, I'm glad you came. I found Jakey, and I know what Hagen is planning. Spit it out, then. Zul plans to raid Samapesh, and he wants to lead the attack himself. I see. And what about that treacherous little bastard? I took him to the Ratai jailhouse. What will happen to him? That's up to Sir Radzik. Considering what he did, he'll be lucky to get out of it alive. I'm not so sure. Radzik always had a soft heart. He got me off the gallows after all. Saddle up now. We'll ride to Samapesh right away. All right. There they are. I can see Zul's colors. It seems they want to parlay, sir. Parlay, eh? Right then. Let's parlay. God be with you, Sakuno. My respects, Sir Hagen. I don't believe I've had the pleasure since the siege of Lansenbach, wasn't it? An age ago, that was. In those days, we fought under the same banner. We did. And even today, we may yet part friends. After all, my quarrel is not with you, but with Kobila. The thing is... Your quarrel with Lord Kobila is my affair, since he tasked me with keeping order in his lands. And you, Hagen, you are disturbing that order. No offence, sir, but you are just a mercenary whose main concern is keeping order in his purse. My dispute with Radzig Kobila concerns a higher ideal. 
cobbler shamed my family over a trifling misdemeanor. He hanged my father, raised our castle to the ground, gave our property away to his family and cronies. And for that, I demand just retribution. But you don't have to stand in my way, Kuno. I'm well aware why you serve Ratzig. You owe him a favor. And from what I've heard, it's not the first time you've had to pay him back. It won't be the last either. The fact of the matter is, you fight Cobbler's battles for him, and you've little or nothing to show for it. If you accept my offer, on the other hand, you can ride away from here a rich man. What do you say, sir? Kuno, you can't do it. You're making a common mistake, Henry. There's a difference between what a man can't do and what he ought not to do. In this case, the difference is the size of Hagen's offer. I understand. But supposing I make up that difference out of my own purse? You? Henry, have you seen the size of that chest? I have, but you might be surprised. And what have you got to lose, anyway? Coin is coin, and if you stay on our side, you can still keep your honor, too. Maybe. But you'll have to pay a high price because Hagen's offer has one big advantage. I don't have to risk my life and that of my men to take it. So, what have you got to match that? Well, well. I never expected that from Radzig or from any of his people. It's a shame you didn't mention that coin right at the start. I'd have put a bit more effort into things. You'll stay, then? Obviously. Well, it didn't seem so obvious to me. Come on now, Henry. Don't take offence. And let's go and deal with Hagen. It's true, Sir Hagen. This is not the first time I've paid Radzig back. Nor will it be the last. But then, he did save my neck from the noose. So I'll be long beholden to him. I'll make no bargain with you. But I will take your silver. <laughs> you would fight me? You're a damn fool. I've no wish to fight, but neither do you. Otherwise, you wouldn't have tried to buy me off. So it seems that we're evenly matched. Let's see who fortune favours. So be it. Yes! <laughs> 
What's bring the it matter? Come on. I'll slaughter you. All right, all right. And your history. Save your wife. No. Not, Not that one yet. There'll be no You'll mercy get for you. Come here, little liver. Yeah, but Jesus Christ.
Greetings. What business have you? Sir, we got rid of Zul. <sighs> Finally, some good news. Tell me all about it. We caught up with Hagen in the fields near Merhoyet, and there was a skirmish. But before that, Hagen tried to bribe Kuno. Tell me, how did you persuade Kuno to stay on our side? You're assuming Kuno would have gone for Hagen's offer? I'm quite certain he gave it some thought. Considering I don't pay him a single groschen, probably quite a lot of thought. You're quite right. So, how did you persuade him? In the end, I had to jingle my purse a bit. What? Look here, Henry, I, I know you're not a pauper, but Hagen must have offered Kuno quite a pile of coin. How could you match that? Indeed, he offered a king's ransom. And it's true, I'm no pauper, but if you don't mind, I'd rather keep the details to myself. <laughs> As you wish, lad. The main thing is you resolve the matter. Any losses on our side? Kuno's men? How did they fare? Some of Kuno's men fell, unfortunately. I'm sorry to hear that. Such is a mercenary's life. May they rest in peace. Anyway, you deserve a reward for your efforts. And thank you, Henry. Once again, I'm beholden to you. I don't know what I'd do without you. Ah, thank you, sir. But I'm sure you'd have managed without me. Don't be so modest, lad. Since that catastrophe at Scalitz, I don't have many people left that I can rely on. Best go and rest now. Thank you, sir. Take care. Yeah. Flour, eggs, salt, yeast. Let it bake a bit and you'll be able to feed the whole family with fresh bread. God's blessings. What can I do for you?
Petals for war. Yeah. Yeah. What in God's name is...